lecture, uh, I'm going to talk about the uh, cardiac digitalis and digoxin as a prototype of this class. Mechanism of action of this medication. As we learned in previous lecture, a patient with heart failure is experiencing decreased contractility of the heart, which impairs the heart's ability to pump blood uh, adequately. Digoxin produces a cardiotonic effect that improves the contractility and pumping ability of the heart. Digoxin also increases the force of myocardial contractility by inhibiting sodium, potassium, adenosine in cardiac cell membranes that decreases the movement of sodium out of myocardial cells after contraction. As a result, calcium enters the cell in exchange for sodium causing additional calcium to be released from intracellular bindings site and increasing myocardial contractility. Digoxin or lenoxin is a prototype drug of this class. Digoxin is derived from digitalis plant. It is used to treat heart failure, atrial fibrillation, and atrial flutter. There are various preparations of digoxin. It is primarily given orally either as a tablet or elixir. The elixir is absorbed uh, more effectively than the tablet and is used primarily with infants and children. When digoxin is given orally, absorption differs among available preparations. Tablets are the most frequently used formulation. Differences in bioavailability are important because a person who is stabilized on one preparation may be underdosed or overdosed if another brand that is administered. It is usually given alongside with diuretic ACE inhibitors or ARBs uh, as a combination um, for heart failure. Cardiac digitalis are used for management of heart failure, atrial fibrillation, and atrial flutter. Digoxin is administered to patients with acute or chronic condition of heart failure as well. And goal for digitalization or maintenance therapy is to improve ejection fraction and exercise tolerance in patients. Digitalization is the administration of a loading dose of digoxin to reach the therapeutic index. The administration of digoxin for rapid digitalization is usually done for atrial tachydysrhythmias rather than heart failure. It is given orally or intravenously and IM injection is not recommended. The maximum uh, drug effect occurs when uh, a steady state tissue concentration is achieved and the maximum drug effect occurs in approximately one week unless loading doses are used. In rapid digitalization, dosage uh, uh, scheduled requires the nurse to administer a total dose of 0.75 mg to 1.5 mg of the uh, digoxin in divided doses, 6 to 8 hours apart, over a 24 hours uh, period uh, of time. It is very important to note that uh, rapid digitalization places the patient at risk for developing digoxin toxicity. Therefore, the nurse must be alert to signs and symptoms of toxicity, which includes very slow or very rapid ventricular rhythm, nausea, vomiting, 
loss of appetite, abdominal distension, broad vision, and mental changes during rapid digitalization. The patient is monitored continuously on cardiac monitor during the rapid digitalization. Another form of a digitalization is a slow digitalization. This can be accompanied by a starting therapy with a maintenance dose of digoxin. Digitalization with a maintenance dose will reach therapeutic effects in approximately one week. The therapeutic serum digoxin level is 0.8 to 2.0 ng per ml. The serum blood level is drawn prior to the administration of the digoxin dose. The blood sample usually is drawn at least six hours after the previous dose because distribution of digoxin to the tissue requires about six hours. If the blood is drawn before six hours, the serum digoxin level may be elevated. The administration of digoxin requires the nurse to truly assess the patient's cardiac status. The nurse must assess the apical pulse for one whole minute. If the rate is less than 60 beats per minute in adults, 70 beats per minute in older children or 100 beats per minute in younger children, the dose is omitted and the healthcare provider is notified. So make sure before administering a digoxin, you as the nurses must check apical pulses for a whole or a full one minute. And if it is less than 60 in older adults, uh, you need to hold the medication and communicate with the physician. Digoxin is a contraindicated in patients with severe myocarditis, ventricular tachycardia, or ventricular fibrillation. It should be administered cautiously in patients with acute myocardial infarction, heart block, because it may place the, these patients at risk for fatal dysrhythmias. Patients with Hypokalemia, hypomagnesemia, or hypercalcemia should also be administered digoxin cautiously due to the risk of dysrhythmia as well. A patient with renal impairment requires an alteration in dosage and cautious administration. Factors that decreases the absorption of digoxin include the presence of food in gastrointestinal tract, malabsorption uh, syndromes, and the concurrent administration of antacids uh, or cholesterol. The administration of digoxin should take place at least one hour before administration of an antacid. It is important to note that when digoxin is discontinued, it takes approximately one week for the drug to be eliminated from the body. Because of digoxin's narrow therapeutic end index, the patient is at greater risk for developing digoxin toxicity. Factors that contribute to the development of digoxin toxicity are summarized in box 24.2. Please make sure to study those factors. Patient with hypokalemia can develop digoxin toxicity even when the serum digoxin level is not considered to be elevated. The signs of toxicity include potentially life-threatening heart rhythm disturbances ranging from a slow to rapid ventricular rhythm. Other adverse effects include nausea, vomiting, loss of appetite, abdominal discomfort, blurred vision, and mental changes. Other symptoms of 
digoxin toxicity include headache, drowsiness, and confusion. These adverse effects are more commonly seen in older adults. Visual disturbances such as blurred vision, photophobia, altered perception of color, and flickering dots indicate acute toxicity and must be reported to the healthcare provider immediately. Factors that contribute to digoxin toxicity are uh, accumulation of larger than necessary maintenance doses, rapid loading uh, or digitalization, whether by one or more large dose or frequent administration of small doses, extremes in age, young or older adult, electrolyte imbalances, uh, including hypokalemia, hypomagnesemia, hypercalcemia, hypoxia due to heart or lung disease in which hypoxia increases myocardial sensitivity to digoxin. Hypothyroidism slow, slows metabolism of digox, digoxin. Concurrent treatment with other drugs affecting the heart such as quinidine, verapamil, or nifedipine. Digoxin toxicity is one of the most common drug-related reasons for hospitalization uh, in the United States. may be difficult to recognize because of non-specific early manifestation and similar, similarity between symptoms of conditions for which digoxin is dispensed and intoxication. Management of digoxin toxicity. Digoxin has to be discontinued, not just reduced in dosage. Most patients with mild or early toxicity recover completely within a few days after the drug, uh, the drug is stopped. In the presence of serious cardiac dysrhythmias, other uh, anti-dysrhythmic drugs may be used by, but are generally less effective in digoxin-induced dysrhythmias. Digoxin immune fab or digibind is a digoxin binding antidote derived from anti-digoxin antibodies produced in sheep. It is recommended only for serious toxicity. Digoxin immune fab combines with digoxin, pulling it out of tissue and into the bloodstream. This causes serum, uh, serum digoxin levels to be high, but the drug is bound to the anti antibody and therefore is inactive. Digoxin immune fab is given intravenously as a bolus injection if the patient is in danger of immediate cardiac arrest, but preferably over 15 to 30 minutes. Potassium chloride, a myocardial depressant that acts to decrease myocardial excitability, is administered if the potassium level is low. The dose depends on the severity of the toxicity, the serum potassium level, and the patient response. Uh, response. Potassium is contraindicated in patients with renal failure and should be used with caution in the presence of cardiac conduction defect. Lidocaine is an anti-dysrhythmic local anesthetic agent which is used to decrease myocardial irritability during digoxin toxicity for management. Digoxin is commonly used in children and has the same indications as in adults. When used in children, digoxin therapy should be prescribed 
and supervised by pediatric cardiologist when possible. The response to a given dose uh, varies with age and size. The child's renal and hepatic function also affect the child's response to the medication. There may be little difference between a therapeutic dose and toxic dose. Very small amounts are often given to children. These factors increase the risk for dosage error in children. In the a hospital setting, institutional policies may require that each dose be verified with another nurse before it is administered. Digoxin is a frequent cause of adverse effects in older adults. Reduced dosage are usually required because of decreased liver or kidney function. Decreased lean body weight and advanced cardiovascular disease are other factors. Impaired renal function leads to a slower drug excretion and increased risk of accumulation in older adults. Dosage must be reduced by approximately 50% with renal failure or concurrent administration of amiodarone hydrochloride, coenidine, nifedipine, or veropamil hydrochloride. These drugs increase the serum digoxin level and increase the risk for toxicity if the dosage is not reduced. The most commonly recommended dose in older adult is 0.125 milligram daily. So it is very a small dose that is used and it's uh, cautious. Digoxin must be used cautiously in patients with diminished renal function because renal impairment delays the drug's excretion both loading and maintenance doses should be reduced. Digoxin toxicity develops more often and lasts longer in patients with renal impairment. Patients with renal impairment who are receiving digoxin even in small doses must be monitored for adverse effect and serum digoxin levels must be monitored more often. Uh, um, digoxin uh, use in a, a patient with hepatic impairment has little effect on digoxin clearance. Adjustment in dosage amount are not required for patient with hepatic impairment. Most digoxin is taken at home and the home care nurse shares the responsibility for teaching patients how to use the drug effectively and how to recognize medication responses that should be reported to the healthcare provider. Accu uh, accurate dosing is very important because underuse may cause the recurrence of symptoms of uh, heart failure and overuse may cause toxicity. Either one condition may be a life threatening.